The top 10 best movies you've never seen. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a top 10 list on basically my top 10 most underrated movies that I've seen. But I would be surprised if you've seen over five and they kind of go across a lot of genres here. So there is a couple horror scary movies. You're either gonna like those or not, but I have kind of a little bit of a mix of everything for this list. I'm not gonna put them in order. I actually like all these movies to a certain extent and it's actually hard for me to pick like one specific one but I do have about 10 and here they are. Running Scared with Paul Walker. Now I actually rewatched this with a buddy of mine about a year ago. I actually really enjoy this movie. It has a few kind of flaws to it. It does go over the top. There is a little bit of a, like an overdone sex scene in the beginning and the story is really, really good. It does get a little convoluted in the middle but it does have some really good twists in store and it is extremely intense. It's probably the most intense Paul Walker movie I've ever seen and probably the best performance I've ever seen. Um, it's kind of got a slightly complex story. Paul Walker is with this mob group and they end up getting the, in a shootout and then they find out that the people they just shot were cops. So they're, they're leaving, they're freaking out that they just shot these cops and some of the mob guys hand all their guns to Paul Walker for Paul Walker to dispose of them, make, make sure they're gone, there's no proof of these guns anywhere. So Paul Walker takes them and puts the guns in his basement. Paul Walker's neighbor is a little boy, sees Paul Walker put the gun in the basement, takes the gun, and then shoots his stepdad with the gun and then runs away with it. And if Paul Walker can get caught up for this, he's pretty much dead. He has to just find the gun and get rid of it as fast as it can. Very interesting story, but I just find it to be really, really intense. And I, again, I wish it was a little bit more polished and smooth, but I really do think if you're a fan of really aggressive, lots of cussing and action and violence, this is actually a good one to check out. Okay, Identity. Now, this is one that I've really heard nobody talk about, but I think it's one of the most unique kind of murder mystery style stories that I've ever seen, and it has a lot of good actors slash actresses in it, and I just really enjoy this movie. Again, this one is a little hard to describe. You have this bald guy, and he committed a bunch of murders, and he's supposed to have multiple personalities. So you have this one story where they're kind of trying to get him tried as insane because he has all these multiple personalities. That's one story. The other story is you have a bunch of about 10, 12 people and it's a really stormy night and no matter what they do, they're just forced into this motel. Like if they leave the motel, they're stuck back there. And somebody at the motel is a murderer. So they can't escape the motel and they know that there's a murderer there somewhere. The murderer is committing these very violent acts and they're basically trying to figure out who it is. Everybody kind of has a little bit of a secret to them. So a lot of the people who seem bad and suspicious in the beginning, you know, it's more of the other people that where you don't know the bad things that they've done. You start to not really know who it is because everybody's got a little bit of a bad streak to them. It's hard to describe, but those people at the motel are all of his personalities like fighting each other off one by one. So every time somebody gets murdered at the hotel, the, the bald guy is like losing one of his many personalities. And one of those personalities is a killer. I actually really, really enjoyed this movie. It's a very unique murder mystery. Like to me, I get it when I watch it, but just trying to explain to you right now, it's just got enough complexity to where it's like, just watch the movie. It's got some really good twists. It's very unique. Check it out. Okay, The Curve. Now, I absolutely fell in love with The Curve the first time that I saw it. I was watching a bunch of Scream-inspired movies because I really like Scream. Um, Scream has a great you know, twist ending. Same with Urban Legend. I really enjoyed that as well. I ended up coming across this movie, The Curve, and there's a lot of parts in this movie that are really hard to watch and dull and actually didn't make me feel that good. But this movie has about a 10 minute montage at the end. I think it's about three twists. I don't really want to ruin the twist for you and tell you exactly how many there is, but there's this 10 minute montage where 
you know, it just twists and twists and twists. And I was just absolutely blown away by this movie. Almost nobody has seen it. I, I remember when I first watched it, there hadn't been a review on YouTube. I actually did a review as well, but I think somebody between the time that I first watched it and the time that I did a review, there was somebody else who did make a review on this movie. It's very cringy. It's actually a little bit hard to watch, but I feel like the payoff at the end is just so good because you do not expect it. Okay, Brick. Now, I actually just saw this movie, and when I was searching it on YouTube, I think like Chris Stuckman or one of these famous movie reviewers like 10 years ago made a movie about how good Brick is, and it's like one of the most underrated movies of all time. And I just absolutely love this movie from beginning to end. I actually was going through a dry spell of watching movies, and I kind of just couldn't get myself to like really get engaged to watch a movie because I had seen so many ones that I just didn't like. I had some stuff to do but I'm like let me just put on brick for 10 20 minutes and see if I can get invested with the story so that I want to keep watching and I just didn't want to put this movie down I had no idea that I was literally gonna watch as much as the movie as I possibly could and I really just didn't want to do anything else but finish the movie I just really enjoyed it. it's very indie it's just very unique but in my opinion I just was very invested the whole time and it's for somebody who likes a really really quality story it's set in like 2005 high school but it feels like a 50s new and war mystery movie i know it sounds weird but they even had the kids i think studying old like 40s and 50s lingo in preparation for this movie i just really really enjoyed brick super solid review coming soon from me the count of monte cristo i absolutely love this movie this movie's so good i heard about it like the old one and then the new one and i think most people when they hear the count of monte cristo it's probably something that they they will say that they've heard before but i was absolutely blown away Way by this movie um, it's just an unbelievable tale of redemption this guy's got a, a great girl he's invested in everything's going good and he's got a jealous best friend it's all kind of complicated but the jealous best friend like rats him out screws him over and a long process happens where he's pretty much shipped to jail forever and slowly but surely he's like basically learning tricks to become a man and he's trying to escape this prison and by the time he gets to the final point in this movie he's just an absolute boss some of the scenes with his former girlfriend when he gets reunited with her or has a chance to talk to her those scenes are just the tension is just so so good this movie pretty much gave me even more than i expected and it's just such a unique tale i feel like they don't tell stories like this nowadays really 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 enjoy the count of monte cristo something i could watch yearly or anybody who hasn't seen it i have no problem putting it on and just watching it anytime okay the ref i think this is from 1992 there's a youtuber named cody leach and i really like his youtube reviews and a lot of the times that he recommends something some sort of classic some sort of nostalgic thing most of the time it just doesn't hit for me and I've watched a lot of the movies that he used to like from back in the day. And just for me, like I was saying, it just really didn't hit for me. But The Ref, I absolutely loved. I love almost everything about this movie. It's got like just the perfect length. It's got, you know, some really funny, quirky family moments in it. Um, it kind of has a feel good ending story where every ending to every story has kind of like a good satisfying feel it's just a movie that i really like and it's very christmas oriented i've kind of noticed that you know which movies have like a halloween very theme so i could watch it on halloween and which movies have like a very christmasy theme and to me i just really really enjoy this movie i find it funny i find it unique normally i don't like the kind of character that dennis leary plays in this movie it, it's kind of like a stereotype i've seen before but I just really, really enjoyed this movie. An excellent suggestion from Cody Leach. Okay, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. Now, this one is rated super, super low, so beware. But this is by far my favorite found footage horror movie. Um, I was kind of a little bit newer to horror when I started watching the first Paranormal Activity. I watched it in theaters with one of my ex-girlfriends, and I actually found it to be very, very interesting and very, very entertaining in the theaters in one watch. Now when you look back at it, there's very little things that happen. It's just like these slight suspense buildings and just a big punch at the end. But I kind of have a special place in my heart for remembering the Paranormal Activities, and I've seen them all. but. Um, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, is totally different from any other Paranormal Activity movie. 
although it does tie into the original story once you get to the middle and the end, but it is completely unique. Most of the Paranormal Activity movies had to deal with, I think her name was Katie. So it's just about these white girls, white family, white girls, you know, that's the end of it. This one is takes place in an apartment complex and all the characters are mainly Mexican. And for some reason, this movie is just by far the best Paranormal Activity. It's entertaining throughout. It doesn't just have like one or two small scenes or small jump scares. It actually kind of keeps you guessing towards the end. And then if you've also seen some of the older paranormal activities, it's just really satisfying that they tie that story into this story. And there was a point in the marked ones where it looks like it's going to end the same way as another movie. It's like the same exact shot, but then something else happens. So it's just a really, really enjoyable movie and by far my favorite found footage horror movie, period. I know it gets terrible ratings, so maybe you don't like it, but, and I know that there's a lot of people who, you know, found footage horror, that's kind of like a real interesting niche of who would enjoy that movie, but I really, really enjoyed The Marked Ones when I first saw it. I also rewatched it with one of my friends and he had nothing bad to say about it. I just really enjoy it. Okay, this is an interesting one. Uh, Bloodshot from 2020 with Vin Diesel. Now, hear me out. Vin Diesel for me is very, very hit or miss. I love his older stuff. I love him in The Fast and the Furious. Uh, I like, to be honest, I really like Triple X, but there's a lot of movies that he just make that uh, it just doesn't really do much for me. Um, when he re did the remake of Triple X, I wasn't really into it. You know, he's done, done all these movies that I remember watching them, I remember checking them out, but it's like, boy, did they not hit, and it's just something I really wouldn't want to watch. Besides my favorite Vin Diesel movies, this is probably the one that I'd want to watch the most. I'd almost want to watch this more than like Pitch Black or a more Riddick or like the Knock Around Guys or that one where he's like an apocalypse, like eating a wolf. Most of the Vin Diesel movies, I would prefer this Bloodshot too. He is aging, you know, quite a bit. And so for him to start as a superhero when he's like 50, 55, and then he's gonna have to have like a 30 year old girl in the movie. And it just was like, because I'm so hit and miss with Vin Diesel, I was really thinking that this movie was not gonna be good. And then almost nobody talked about it. Nobody has anything good to say about it. But I found this movie really enjoyable to watch like I was saying like maybe in the top five most Vin Diesel movies I'd want to watch if you can if you count like the Fast and the Furious franchise as one there's a lot of Vin Diesel movies that I would never want to see again and I really do not mind this movie to be honest it's got a little bit of a unique story it's not the most unique story I've ever seen but it takes a while to really understand what's going on. Like the first 10 or 15 minutes, he's like an army guy and he's going to like do this extraction. And I'm not gonna ruin anything else in the movie, but literally none of that matters because of what's actually happening in the movie once you find out 30, 45 minutes, 60 minutes in. I just found this to be a really enjoyable watch. I do wish it had a little bit more intense CGI because they kind of save it for one big, huge bout at the end. And I think they made this on like $60 million, so it didn't have like a hundred or $200 million budget, but to be honest guys, I've just really enjoyed this and I'm somebody who I'm really picky with Vin Diesel movies and this one was a very easy watch for me. Okay, Constantine. Now, I know this was really big when it came out. I remember seeing tons of, you know, promotions for it, things like that. Um, I remember actually talking to my friend and he would like always say, oh, John Constantine, oh, you got a John Constantine. -um. But besides that guy who said that, I don't know anybody who's ever talked about Constantine in a good way. Um, I actually really, really, really enjoy this movie. It's almost like it's just a totally different sci-fi experience. They really create an interesting world here. I, I'm always been interested in like somebody recreating a, a heaven and a hell and a very interesting, believable, spiritual realm. In this movie, uh, John Constantine, he like has this ability to where he could like open up like the spiritual realm a little bit or he could open up like the hell realm a little bit and he's just kind of like a good guy deep down but then he also he, he sins a lot he smokes a lot of cigarettes so he's kind of in the middle but i just really really enjoyed constantine it's like a very interesting story of good and evil there's a point at the end where you actually see the devil and i really like the actor in there and i found it to be so 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 unique 
just the way that they did the whole devil scene at the end and just the way this movie wraps up i just really really found it interesting and for me i almost might prefer it to like the john wicks just for me personally because I just really like the mythology and the lore and all the extra places this this one goes by the end. There was a few little weird parts. Like I think there's like a part where there's just like this guy walking in the desert. And I remember that wasn't the most interesting part of the movie. And I don't think that really had too, too much to deal with it, but I really enjoyed Constantine. Okay, my last one, I'm gonna have to go with Inside Man. Now, this one is one with Clive Owen, Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington is just, I absolutely love him in anything. I'm happy to see him in anything. He's just one of the best actors ever. But um, Inside Man is very, it's a very, very unique heist style movie. They let you know very, very early on that Clive Owen is like the main guy who's like robbing this bank. He's the one who's doing all the talking and he seems very, very in control as if there's things that he knows that all the police don't know. So he's like, he's in there, he's doing all this weird stuff. He's asking for planes and all this. And it's just a very, very unique, serious movie. And I found like the twist ending here or the kind of answer to what his secret is and the answer to kind of like their trick behind the bank robbery. It was very unique, but also very, very practical. This is just a really good, interesting watch. Very serious, kind of alluring, very entertaining and mysterious. And it's got a very good practical yet believable ending. Really do like Inside Man. Let me know what you think of my list. Let me know which movies of these ones that you've seen down below. I'd be very surprised if you'd seen more than five. Based on the genres you like, there's certain ones you're gonna be more interested in. And if there's also some other movies that are just nobody talks about, but you think are so, so good, let me know down below. Um, these ones were definitely my best. Let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know some other underrated movies. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I could not do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully we're having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.